Good morning and welcome to Our Lady Mount Carmel Basilica as we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. They survived because they had a good leader. Our entrance hymn can be found at number 236 in the Missalettes. Christ the Lord is risen today at number 236. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. Dearly beloved, as we gather to offer the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on this Divine Mercy Sunday within the Easter octave, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to your Almighty Lord. God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what fount they have been washed by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is and reigns with you with the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. But they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to his need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Yours forever. Keep 
give thanks to the Lord, for he is God, his love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is God, his love. has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is God, his love is A reading from the letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know in that we love the children of God when we love God and, his, and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over our world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. To everyone present, a blessed Divine Mercy Sunday within the octave of Easter. The prayer of Sister Saint Faustina, O blood and water that gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. This prayer recalling the blood and water that came from the body of Jesus Christ on the cross when he was pierced with the sword by the soldier, shows up again in the very vision that St. Faustina has of the risen Christ. Her prayer, I think, perfectly describes today's Divine Mercy Sunday. Embrace is the message with all your heart, the mercy of the once crucified and now risen Christ, and say with your entire being, Jesus, I trust in you. The great apostle, Thomas, doubted the words of the other disciples when they told him that Jesus rose from the dead. And he said, by the way, his fresco is right up here, looking down upon the risen Christ. He said in reply, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into the side, I will not believe. And then, 
it happened that Jesus appeared to them once again, this time with Thomas present. And he said to Thomas the apostle, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believed. And Thomas said in answer to the risen Christ, my Lord and my God. There is a popular catechesis or instruction that echoes these words of Thomas the Apostle. At every Mass, when the priest elevates the body and the blood of Christ for adoration, in our hearts pray those very words of St. Thomas, my Lord and my God. In other words, in our midst, right now on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the once crucified and now risen Lord pours out his heart to mercy for all of you. That is why in every way and with faith every day and at every Mass, we must answer, Jesus, I trust in you, my Lord and my God. On page 18, the Apostles' Creed, the very baptismal symbol of the Holy Roman Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living of the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, our petitions. For Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, for all priests and deacons and consecrated religious, for an increase to the royal priesthood and consecrated life here in our diocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all government leaders and civil authorities, that the wisdom of Christ will guide them in caring for and protecting the most vulnerable in our society, especially the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for a reverence of all human life from conception to natural death, for an end to abortion, infanticide, and euthanasia, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the people of God, that each of us may be confirmed, conformed to Christ and become instruments of his mercy for others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for success of our annual diocesan appeal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all newly baptized, especially Adeline Marie Amicone, and Carson Ray Hornbuckle, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for peace in troubled areas of the world, that Christ's victory over death may bring an end to war and suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who doubt, who have lost faith, that they may be illuminated by the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dignity and immense value of women will be recognized in every culture, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us mention our petitions and our prayers in the silence of our hearts. As we pray for those who are sick or homebound, for our youth and elders, for those who minister to the sick or the dying, for those who have no one to pray with them nor for them, through the intercession of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Joseph and St. Anthony, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the cries of your people. In the name of the risen Christ, who is divine mercy, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our Lord and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, of those you have brought to new birth, and that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this octave Easter above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. The true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are due to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred octave of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially with the ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our Lord Jesus Christ. With Joseph, her spouse, your apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Petus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things would be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, 
we pray. Graciously accept the oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have pleased to give new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, and order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering of a respect, that it becomes spiritual and acceptable, becoming for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and raised his eyes to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim our death, the Lord. We profess your praise and exhort until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, in the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you we are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim in humble prayer. We ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant, Marie Lipinski, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant to our Lord and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light in peace to us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Grant graciously some share in the fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, 
Marcellinus Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha Lucy, Agnes Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. And may thus we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with life, you bless them, and bestow them upon us. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory of now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Amen. Oh, 
Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception in this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the few announcements. Our vocation crosses, we pray, for the increase of vocations to the Holy Priesthood and to religious life in our Catholic Diocese of Youngstown goes to the home of Paulette Charello. Okay, thank you for praying for vocations in your home this week. Please remember the repose of the soul of Lawrence Dean Nelson, age 85, whose funeral mass was this past Monday. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Eternal rest grant unto Lawrence Dean, O Lord, and that perpetual light shine upon him. May, May he rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May his soul and the souls of the faithful depart to the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. Amen. This coming Tuesday is the fourth week of the Divine of St. Anthony of Padua. It will follow the noon mass here at the Basilica and then at 5.30 at St. Anthony's with benediction of the Blessed Sacrament and then back here at 7 p.m. with Novena and benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. Please return your rice bowls, a project of Catholic Relief Service for Work Hunger a world hunger, if you not yet have done so, try to do it by next Sunday. To date, 147 households have contributed to our diocesan annual appeal, one in hope, one in mission, for diocesan ministry and Catholic charities. We have still falling short of our uh, 81,000 goal by uh, 50 percent so please make your contribution we do need your help your contribution envelope uh, if not at home there are extras on each side of the pews today take one home and make your pledge and drop it in next sunday's collection or drop it in the mail and next sunday april the 14th is our monthly spaghetti di spaghetti dinner here at our lady of mount karma following this Mass until 4 p.m. and takeouts are available. And St. Vincent de Paul Society, which reaches out to the hungry of our area, ask you to consider to bring some non-perishable food items uh, as you come to the Philly dinner. And in return, as a sign of gratitude, you shall have a dollar discount off from your uh, dinner. And I thank you in advance. And then on April the 21st uh, at St. Anthony Church uh, from 12 p.m. until 3 p.m., they are having their spring spaghetti dinner. It is, for organizational purposes, uh, uh, takeout only. And that information is in the bulletin. And it gives me great pleasure now to introduce uh, the two young people to be baptized on this Divine Mercy Sunday, and they're going to be baptized with the Easter water that we uh, blessed last week. It was a little cold, so I'm in for some surprises, I have a feeling. Uh, uh, so anyway, we'll go by uh, year. Born first of the two children as Adeline Marie Amicone, and Adeline Marie is the child of Anthony Frank Amicone and Elisa Marie Still Amicone, and the godparents are Robert Andrew Amicone and Destiny Still. So, parents and godparents, would you please stand? And uh, who's holding Adeline? Who's holding Adeline? Who has it? They are up uh, nice and high, Dad, so they can see Adeline in the back. There. Uh, Mm 
And then we have uh, Carson. Is Carson the first cousin of Adeline? Uh, okay. Then we have Carson Ray Hornbuckle. And Carson Ray Hornbuckle is the uh, son of Rashan Michael Hornbuckle and Mar Marissa Blanche Amicone Hornbuckle. And the godparents are Anthony Frank Amicone and Alyssa Marie Still. So godparents, parents, would you stand? And then dad has Carson Ray nice and high and face the back. Oh. long and happy years. What a wonderful way to celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, baptizing your two little children. Okay. And to all of you, a good Sunday, a good Divine Mercy Sunday, and let us stand for uh, the final blessing. Uh, our, we shall conclude the octave with an alleluia that, uh, that Mark will uh, sing for the dismissal. And then remember, though we close the octave today, we still have the Easter season, which goes to all the way through Pentecost. So those that like to celebrate, here's your opportunity. 50 straight days, not so bad. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confirm on you the gift of redemption and adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. And may he, who by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of eternal and everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ, in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our closing hymn can be found at number 239, Alleluia, the strife is o'er, number 239.
Tell me he's holding his own.